Good evening, Galaxy fans. I sure hope you're all doing well. My name is Mike Gray. I cover both the Galaxy and LAFC for the Striker. Here with me tonight is our faithful beat writer, the one and only Alex Reese. Alex, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing good, Mike. How are you doing? Oh, I could be better. Uh, had a bit of an injury. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about that later. Uh, yeah, man, I'm doing so good. Let's uh, let's just cut right to it. Uh, I was at the Community Cup last week. Uh, it's actually uh, um, it was some it was the latest uh, genius creation by the Galaxy community. Uh, it was a five on five football futsal tournament. There were supporters groups there were podcasts or small businesses like one two threads participating and uh i gotta tell you man it was such a party uh you know at the time i thought it was exactly what the galaxy just community and just the fans and the supporters it was exactly what we all needed and uh you know the game was just sort of i, I like to think of the the community cup as sort of a sneak preview of what would happen at the uh game later on but yeah, um, it was really special because for the first time in maybe six months, the duration of the six months of the boycott, this was the first time where you had all the supporters united doing something together. Uh, all, f everyone but uh, Ghost Ultras had a team there, and uh, you know everyone had sort of a little spot, and so everyone was putting up their banners. You had a bunch of stuff, and uh, what made it cool is a whole bunch of Galaxy fans showed up, so uh, everyone was invested. Uh, like the games were fun. Uh, <laughs> everyone was yelling at the ref. Uh, Bruce was one of the uh, guest refs. He's uh, one. Of, he's a f popular fan, so that was pretty funny. Um, let me give you a play-by-play -play on my day. Um, I was playing with Ellie as our house as a keeper. Uh, we were doing pretty good. We were up like four three. I had the ball. I was playing keeper. I was just sort of fainting, swinging, just trying to disguise a pass. And then all of a sudden, someone just kicked me from behind right and then i fell to the ground and i was like ah who kicked me and then i turned around and there was nobody and that's when i knew i was in trouble <laughs> all right i I, got, I caught my foot in the turf and basically my calf exploded and it sucked but um back to what i was saying alex it was a party man uh you know I, I almost got stuck because I couldn't just sit there and just kind of with my sore ankle. So I started walking around. I started talking to people. Uh, I coached a few games. Uh, that was pretty cool. Someone handed me a Modelo at some point. And so <laughs> after a few games, like, you know, I, I, ha I had a jacket. Like, I happened to bring a leather jacket. And at some point, I was like, dude, you're, you're, just, you're just yelling at people, like, with a Modelo in your hand and a leather jacket. This is not a good look. Go somewhere else. So <laughs> I started talking to uh, the fans and... There was like a, a dance floor kind of there was like a dj and you know that's how you knew i was having fun because at one point like i was dancing and i'm like dude you got one leg man this is not good <laughs> but um it was a really really good time uh shout out to manny from uh, galaxy outlaws for putting the whole thing together shout out to the galaxy for being a participating partner in this event uh <laughs> i got two complaints because this was a perfect event with the exception of a few things the first is that they wanted the, they were charging 18 bucks no, no no 18 bucks and 50 cents for modelos and the way i see it Alex is even 21. And I, I can't people. even like buy beers. And that's the crazy <laughs> amount for me. 18.50. Wow. We're not even in the stadium, dude. Like, I mean, don't we get a discount? Like, I don't know. Just uh, th that's my man. That's my you know man of the people moment. But um, and the other thing which was annoying was okay. Uh, when I do my article, I'll probably just say it was a non-contact injury or whatever. But um. There were a lot of people who got injured that first day, uh, you know, in, on that tournament. And the common thread with everyone was they were all wearing cleats. And that's one of my gripes is everyone talks about, you know, well, the turf people. But, you know, they, they like to claim that uh, grass and turf, it's the same thing. I'm like, if it is the same thing, then why can't I wear, like, turf shoes on grass, grass shoes on turf, whatever. But, um, yeah, so I highly suggest if you go to Galaxy Park, bring turf shoes it might even be better to just wear like sneakers and just slip around a little bit. Cause... Yeah, I remember uh, when we had our media game a couple of months ago, I, I brought turf shoes. Um, the thing was on that day, it wasn't great because if I remember correctly, it was like a rainy, like cloudy day. And like the <laughs> turf was all slippery and wet and everybody else had cleats. And, you know, that, that definitely helped uh, get them, ha let them have better grip. 
for me, I kept slipping the entire time and I couldn't plant my feet right. So I was so frustrated because uh, I knew I could have played better that day. Uh, but, you know, the, the the elements of the weather just weren't there. But overall, Galaxy Park, uh, it opened uh, officially on Saturday. Uh, you got to see grand opening, you know, the ribbon cutting, uh, you know, people from AEG who kind of helped fund this project and also see all the people just participating there. I mean, you saw the pickleball courts, uh, the futsal courts were full of kids playing, everybody playing and having a good time. So, you know, with the Community Cup and this being open, I think this is a great addition, uh, Galaxy Park to Dignity House Sports Park, and it's going to add to the game day environment. Yeah, uh, when you when I was driving up, I, I couldn't help but notice that the park was full of just kids and just people just exploring. Uh, I thought it was a brilliant idea. Uh, Dignity Health Sports Park, it's, it's a huge facility. And, you know, with LAFC and everything they're do doing, they're looking to make Dignity Health Sports Park more of a destination venue. And that helps tremendously. I mean, uh, I can see myself going back there towards the end of the year well, once I, my foot heals. But... Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, so moving on, uh, Saturday, or excuse me, uh, yesterday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, the Galaxy Sporting Kansas City played to a 2-2 draw. Um, we have sort of off the, the field as the theme, so I think it, first thing I should point out is that attendance was uh, 20,960. Dude, that is a ridiculous number for a midweek game versus Sporting Kansas City. Yeah, I think obviously kind of having all the supporter groups come back, uh, you know, Galaxy Park opening, like people are going to want to go and be part of this event. And you saw that uh, we felt the atmosphere and the noise for the first time for a full 90 minutes, which is amazing. You got to see LA Ride Squad full and bringing that energy on their end. Uh, Victoria Block as well. Lots of noise, flags, chants. It felt like a genuine home environment for the first time in a really long time. And you know, uh, it's crazy to think, uh, I guess, the, I would say the progress has kind of been done in a way. Um, you know, obviously, Chris Klein, it was a mix of, of different things. The reason why he left, most notably because, you know, the team hadn't performed and uh, AG decided, you know what, enough is enough. And obviously, with Klein staying on with the club, uh, it made it so that it was such a polarizing thing for supporters and people who really wanted to kind of see the Galaxy do well. So getting to see all these fans come up here the elevated atmosphere and just the pure fun that I think this game was from a neutral perspective in a way. Um, you know, if it, it was a, a good destination to be in uh, a good place to, to watch soccer on Wednesday night. Yeah. Make no mistake. Uh, this boycott was far bigger than just the supporters. Uh, at some point, you know, a healthy, a healthy chunk of the fan base started chipping in and they started participating just fans, hardcore supporters and uh, it got to the point where, again, six months, and we really need to put this in perspective. There are fans who have been dying to walk inside that stadium, just dying to go to a game, dying to buy merchandise, and they've been stuck. And there's been no guarantees. There's been no deadlines. There's been no, you know, at some point, you know, you, you wonder if so maybe some folks lost hope because, I mean, who, who knows when anything was going to happen, but eventually it did hit the bo galaxy's bottom line and then chris klein was let go and then you know um i do think that the la riot squad uh i do think that the fan base collectively owes them a big salute uh they had a lot to lose they had a lot on the line by walking away from their section and i think in the end they made real positive change and you know alex uh it's always a t we're always talking in america we're so self-conscious always about like america and mls and how our sport compares to other teams in the world like if i told you like you know to close your eyes and picture okay just some random thing like napoli or something napoli uh they they had a situation where their fans uh got together and boycotted it and all of a sudden they ousted their club president now if you heard about that you'd go oh wow that's that's very authentic and very your you know that's very uh, authentic football and football European. heritage <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, wow, why don't we have that in America? Well, you just saw that happen here, you know? Uh, I, uh, it's a common theme of mine. I talk about how California is the soccer state of America. LAFC, up until very recently, they were on such a roll with everything they were doing. It looked like they were going to easily win the Champions League. I think they blew that one a little bit. But, yeah, you have LAFC just pushing the envelope. And then on the other side of the uh, of town, you have the Galaxy, whose fans, who, by the way, have... have it's going to be almost three decades of uh, support. You know, they went and did something that was really just notable and just about uh, as authentic as it gets. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, 
me personally, Alex, I don't get self-conscious about our soccer. This is America. We play soccer our way. It rules. Like I Personally, I just like doing things our way and not worrying about what everyone else thinks. The thing that drove me crazy about El Trafico is all these people going, well, what about, like, you know, this isn't going to be authentic. And then you literally have, like, Borussia Dortmund players like Mats Hummels and stuff just laughing during interviews talking about how great El Trafico is. So trust me, like, don't worry about what they're thinking over there they were they're either thinking positive or if they don't like us who gives a crap so um but yeah i mean dude it was such a festive mood can can i paint the picture of what happened uh i pulled up to the stadium uh and i parked and i was sitting there kind of like all right i got crutches uh I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna look like a dork. So at the very least, let me you know do a maybe a, a warm up lap around my car or something. But I didn't get a chance to do that because I look up and then Alex is kind of waving like, "Hey man!" Like turned out he parked at the same time as I did, and so right across from you. Yeah, exactly. It was uh, it was almost it was, it was almost scripted in a way. It was that. Great. It was not planned at all. No, nope, very impromptu. Not at all. We'll we'll talk about that later because uh, my friend Alex here is a bit of a genius. But anyway, and so you know he, he, we embrace and it's like hey you know and then um, I'm kind of stuck in my one spot because I didn't want to move. <laughs> and then um, like six or seven Galaxy supporters, that, you know, they kind of see us and they walk over and I'm just like oh man this is this is gonna be a special day, isn't it? And then that's when Alex went over to Galaxy Park and then um, here's what I did. I went and uh, just limped to my butt over to the Lars tailgate area. Let me tell you something. I don't think I've ever seen that big of a party in my life. There was a band, there was banda, there was like this entire, entire facility was just packed. And I, I've been there during big games. Uh, last year, LA, uh, LA Nashville uh, playoff game. That was, another, that was an early kickoff. So you had like, there was pancakes and all sorts of cool stuff going pancakes and whiskey now i remember yeah and uh dude this was bigger than that uh and everybody was celebrating it was a big party i'm kind of sad you weren't there alex uh but you you know you're we we both have to kind of do our thing uh, i saw eli from uh this week in mls there's just so many people running around i mean i just had a great time um did you, were you feeling the vibes from the uh were you even did you even walk over there or were you just kind of you know tell me about your vibes i was from at the, uh, galaxy park when we pulled up i, I stayed there for a while because obviously you know it's a new thing that was being open i recorded a quick little video and posted it on twitter uh you know just a little preview of the day um you know i just wanted to see gauge what it was like there and obviously it was a lot of fun like i said lots of the kids kind of playing around you saw families there um every kind of everybody kind of seeing what was going on but i think that was a good thing to see you know on one section of the stadium of you know kind of a homecoming for everybody and then on the other side of the stadium you have a place where people kind of just play and you know just have fun and end their way before the game and really kind of build that atmosphere of, of soccer just before the, this game and uh you know like we mentioned earlier during this game you definitely felt a, a good atmosphere uh for this matchup on wednesday all right enough of the off the field stuff let's get to the good stuff uh the game of course which it was a 2-2 draw um subscribe to the striker ladies and gentlemen because i'm telling you right now alex knows what he's talking about uh now, to start off the beginning of this game, the, the Galaxy were a bit up against it. Uh, that's what's going to happen when you lose your star striker and then your backup star striker to international duty and then uh, your star uh, international, well, U.S. Uh, Galen Hill, yeah, he was in Chicago, so um, spine of your team kind of gone a little bit. Uh, and the Galaxy struggled. Uh, sporting Kansas City dominated the first 10 minutes or so, and then uh, you had a goal that was very typical Galaxy this year. Uh, Eric Tommy was on the uh, right channel. He had time and space to, to pick out Alan Polito, who Alex said specifically was going to score this game, and then uh, it was just all too easy. Yeah, and, and on that play, uh, Alan Polito's first goal, you kind of see Chris Mavinga Everybody on the back line pushes forward except Mavinga. And that was kind of one of the things I talked about in my Keys of the Game article, which you should read every single week. I talked about that Mavinga was going to be the weak link in this back line. Not because he's a bad player, but he lacks that uh, that chemistry. He lacks that match sharpness. Again, this is his first start uh, since April against LAFC, where he had to leave that game injured. Uh, so I knew Mavingo was going to be tested in this game, whether that was on one-on-one, -on -one, whether that would be him uh, with the collective rest of the back line. 
And again, Kansas City and Polito made the right run. Mavinga kind of was just a little bit more ball watching, didn't really get to hear the communication. I don't know if Casares told him anything because Polito was right behind him, but he didn't move up, didn't move forward. And unfortunately, Polito kind of puts that away. But looking at the replay, I feel like Jonathan Bond should have, you know, gotten a better touch on that. You know, I know it's easy for me to say, you know, here watching the replays and doing all that. But uh, I, I feel like that this was a goal that could have been avoided, not just for Mavinga's uh, little error there. But also, I think Bond maybe could have done a little better. Yeah, he could have anticipated that cross. I mean, the thing that was kind of really just ugh, about that goal was... Uh, the way Tommy just chips it, like you, you should never have time and space to just pick out your opponent like that. And again, it, you know, it was a very just kind of delicate kind of chip, which has no business belonging. You know, that should have been cleared either by Bond or by uh, Mavinga. We both agreed that uh, Mavinga hasn't been playing consistently, and it's unfair of him. I mean, it sucks. You know, you're just not playing game after game, and all of a sudden you're guarding Alan Polito. I mean, how's that supposed to work? So, I do feel I do feel for him, but at the same time, there is a reason why why Jalen's been starting this year, and uh, yeah, it was it is what it is. Um, but then you had a bit of a turnaround, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the second goal. But um, speaking of Preston Judd, uh, we're gonna give his, we're gonna give him his praise. Uh, Partly because he's so good at just making things happen. Uh, first, and you know, we're going to talk about the Galaxy's first goal. Uh, Sporting Kansas City fans were a little angry uh, because if you look at the replay, uh, he, Preston Judd, it really looks like he trips over his own feet on that play, the one that leads to the uh, to, to the whistle and the dead ball and then Costa. Uh, but yeah, well, uh, obviously Judd's pretty good. But then, um, Co all right, now we need to get to the part where Alex is a genius again because I asked him in real time what's going to happen on this play, and then I uh, Alex goes, "Okay, Casaras is going to be at the far post and he's going to nod it down." You saw what happened. Costa played Casas at the far post. He nodded it down. 1-1 one, one Galaxy. Dude, do you have any lottery ticket numbers? I'm just asking, man. Like, please. I could use some money. I just bought a car. <laughs> yeah, I think the Galaxy, one thing we've been talking about a lot is that needing to get that danger from set pieces. And if you look at throughout the season, the number one trend of the Galaxy being dangerous on these opportunities is Martin Casares, whether that's him hitting it at the ball or heading it into uh, more people where then that get becomes a goal. Um, he's going to be the danger man on, on these plays. And, and Douglas Costa, props to him for such a beautiful ball in there. Ricky Pouge does well to kind of make the defense drop and then Costa with it perfect ball right to find Casares. nobody else there it's lofted perfectly and i think this is you know a, a great moment for the galaxy because we know that they've had their struggles when they go down by a goal they were able to fight back i think this goal was 12 minutes after Polito's goal so they were able to you know get an opportunity quickly and like you mentioned right like jed i think tripped over himself like he played an impact uh, one way or another whether that's you know him scoring later on like we'll talk about or like i guess uh you know i guess these dark arts and drawing these uh ghost fouls so uh, overall, I think I think I think uh, we'll talk about Judd a little bit later. But I think overall, uh, having a player like him and those set piece opportunities as well also gives uh, the op opposing defense another person to worry about. So that combined with the ball from uh, Costa to Casares, Galaxy I think could really develop into a good team on set pieces, which I really hope they do because they need as many dimensions to be dangerous. Yeah, you're telling me. Uh... And what about Douglas Costa? Uh, here's a player who was struggling, uh, wasn't getting game time, you know, the never-ending excuse that the dude's just not fit. And then uh, all of a sudden, he's got consecutive games with assists. He had at least three big chances created in that game. He looked lively. He looked like a player who had adverse, who was being, uh, who had adversity, who wasn't just giving up, uh, who wasn't just expecting everything to just work out for him. And, uh, it makes you wonder just a tad when when uh, Vanny in the press conference, you know, uh, there was a question about whether or not there'd been a change in attitude from Costa, and the response was no. Uh, he's just getting more match fit, and uh, apparently he's had a pretty good attitude the entire year, which, I mean, look, nobody likes to see a player get kicked out of, uh, potentially get kicked out of a game. We all went nuts when that happened, and he got the criticism that he rightfully deserved. Um... It's not unheard of to have players who just are hotheads and just have one or two moments of 
just blood rush to the head every year. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe give this guy a chance or, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what yeah, happens. Yeah, I think the big thing with Costa is that I want to make now... you answer that question. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. I won't because, we again, nobody has the answer if, it's, if he's turned it around. But the thing that needs to happen, whether it's him scoring goals or not, is just him being a catalyst on offense. Again, with Chicharito being on the season-ending injury list now, his campaign is over. You lose one of your most dangerous players and your most productive players in the last two years. So, you know, Ricky Puj, we know he's not going to be a guy to score a ton of goals. And, you know, he, he'll rack up assists like he did on the night. Um, but he's not going to be a guy that's going to be goal dangerous, especially considering his average shot distance is like 25 yards out. You're not going to be uh, a killer from that long. It's so rare to see that. Yeah, that's um, Ricky's job. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Douglas Costa has to be the catalyst on the offensive end. I mean, you know, we, we talk about Tyler Boyd, him being a very direct player, somebody quick and fast. But I don't really see him too much as a playmaker with Douglas Costa on the other hand he is that wide playmaker he's a guy who you know on the dribble beats a guy can make the right pass and it leads to a goal and we saw his danger on the set piece opportunities I don't think there's another player on the Galaxy team that can ping a ball like that and especially for Caceres in that situation uh, so I think Costa right now just needs to kind of be, still become that catalyst be the guy who is a game changer against St. Louis Vanny said he was really close to taking out Costa but he kept them on he knew that he felt he felt that he could be able to provide something, and he did. He provided that uh, game tying goal uh, in St. Louis uh, last week, and then today, uh, I mean, excuse me, yesterday, he who was a guy who was dangerous, who wasn't afraid to take on people, was good uh, at finding the ball in between the lines and in the pockets. He was good at being able to provide some more danger out wide because let's be honest, this Galaxy team has no threat out wide. Uh, but Costa provides that due to his technical ability and again that quality that he has that I don't think any other player on the team has so while we don't know the answer if he has turned it around this is definitely a good start and something to build on Vanny said uh, you know fitness has been the big thing that's held him back which is true his availability has not been great since joining the LA Galaxy so if he's going to keep this up he needs to be healthy he needs to be playing games and again, we need to see that he continues to look like the Douglas Costa that's fighting and, you know, isn't jogging or, you know, doing the easy thing uh, with with Chicharito and uh, Daniel Ovalich kind of out this game. He took it up a step and he became the catalyst. He became the guy on the night. Yeah, fully bought in, not not being entitled, not pretending like he's still at Bayern Munich. Yeah, I understand. He was excellent uh, in St. Louis. The, the one stat I thought was pretty interesting, four, he drew four fouls. Uh, if you p- picture, like, Costa getting knocked over four times in him, like, just, you would picture him getting a little angry. But, again, maybe, you know, you, you have some players who, you know, like, they, they show up, they're not used to things, and then they turn it around their second year. I think I Costa know, likes that, to be honest. I mean, look, this is a guy who had Bayern Munich, would take on defenders, was pacey. You know, we know the flair that he has. We've seen those highlights of him kind of doing that, you know, the the, the inside out of the foot nutmeg against Ajax. I see that video all the time. Um, I, I think, you know, him being a guy that can draw fouls and get that motivation, I think he needs that. He likes that. And it kind of pushes him to be a better player. Um, obviously, we know there's been times where he's kind of lost that emotion um, for reasons less than, you know, getting knocked over, right? But I, I think Costa needs that, you know, in a way, that drive and being a dangerous player, you know, that comes with it. You're going to get a bit of the the knocks, a bit of those trips. But I, I feel like the Galaxy need that in order to kind of have a player that can attract more gravity on defenders and, you know, let other players shine like he did uh, with uh, a lot of different plays that unfortunately didn't end up in goals. Preston Judd, man, he's already... He's already a fan favorite. I don't want to say he's becoming. He already is a fan favorite. And, yeah, and uh, only what two MLS starts and a fan favorite. Like, that's, well, that's he he brings dope. it. Like I said, he makes things happen. Uh, he had an unbelievable play where uh, I forgot if it was Ricky who brought it up, but on the one where Tyler bangs it off the post, uh, he does a really good job of checking back, making a run, making himself open on the left flank, and then he plays a inch perfect ball to Tyler Boyd, who just unfortunately just banged off the crossbar. You know, for me, if you hit it off the crossbar, I don't think you blow it. Some people think that, like, it's just the worst thing in the world. Like, it's not the worst, but it's, like, the ultimate just almost, you know? And uh, in that case, it came back to haunt the Galaxy, didn't it? Yeah, and again, that's kind of been the story of this Galaxy season, leaving crumbs on the table when they should be eating everything that's on there. This team really needed three points, and again, uh, this result felt like a loss in a way, even though they did pick up something. 
But, I mean, they were playing some good soccer in that second half, and they were creating chances. They were looking dangerous. They were on the front foot. So to not be able to finish that off was really disappointing. And, again, we're going to point to this chance as the opportunity when the Galaxy could have sealed this game. But, you know, that's soccer sometimes. And the Galaxy team, they're in the bottom of the Western Conference for a reason, right? And that kind of showed up uh, on Wednesday night. But, again, you know, the Judd was able to – you know, stay consistent and, you know, hungry. There was a goal that was disallowed where, you know, he did get a little bit of physical with the defender, did use a little bit of the hands, but, um, you know, the play didn't finish. I think the goal, uh, he, I didn't hear the whistle at first uh, when the referee blew it. He, like, right before Preston uh, shot, and then, you know, I don't think he heard it either because he was celebrating like he scored, and then, you know, he turns around, he's like, oh, you know, <laughs> it got taken away. But uh, eventually, yeah, he did uh, find the back of the net. Yeah, Rogo was... Uh... He claimed that, you know, he was celebrating for fun. I was like, he didn't hear that whistle. Yeah, um, we both agreed that maybe with just a little bit more time with the first team, maybe with a bit more development, you know. Judd seems very, uh, he seems very confident anytime we've talked to him that he has the physical tools. He, it's just a matter of just that technical ability. So hopefully he can pick it up because, I mean, yeah. we're all rooting for him. And for sure. He, he provides he can, something different than the other strikers right like uh you know chicharito jovalich they're more poachers more low balls you know trying to get that first touch finish a lot of the times judd on the other hand is a guy who's got in a good work rate off the ball he's a guy who's making these runs again he's going to beat up center backs and i think that's the most important thing is that he's able to take a toll on his opponents jovalich and chicharito they're not going to be the guys who you're going to see body a center back or you know fight for this and that all the time but but judd has that he can be a target man when they want to, want to try to play long balls. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, like we, like you said, Mike, you know, with a bit more technical ability, he can definitely be a real game changer, not just for the Galaxy, but in this league. I think he's got every physical tool to, you know, compete with those big center backs, those athletic center backs that are in MLS that, you know, will get physical. Again, this is a physical league, and he fits the profile of this league. So I, I just feel like, you know, are you going to bench Dayan Jovalic to maybe see a bit more oppression, Judd? I mean, that's a discussion to be had for sure, and we can you know have a debate about that all day well, long. Well, one of the most revisionist kind of um, segments of Galaxy history is the idea of everyone knows Alan Gordon. Everyone knows Alan Gordon's a legend. Uh, oh man, it, it was just well. I have a I have a locker room story that I'll share. Maybe some other time. It's a little raunchy, but yeah. Um, so yeah, Alan Gordon. He's a player who was just so valuable for the Galaxy, but people forget that there was a period of time where he was this sort of perceived as this rookie kind of, um, you know, I don't even know how to describe it, but there was a period where, where he was perceived as like a weak link with the Galaxy. And not only a weak link, like, play, like some of the fans like made fun of the guy back in the day. Like, and it was like, again, I, I know that sounds like, like what? Because Alan Gordon is such a legend, but yeah. And this was back when, um, David Beckham first came onto the scene. And so, you know, there's just kind of emphasis on, Oh, look, you know, look at the scrubs he's playing at. And I, I think Gordon kind of caught some of that, but I mean, as he developed, he got better. And then by the time of his career, he became such a damn legend. I mean, it's unbelievable with that. Although, you know, he he had that period with the earthquake, earthquakes that Galaxy fans would prefer to, for, to block out from memory. But um, yeah, uh, Preston Judd has what it takes, and he's got the mentality, and he's also got the fans behind him. And the Galaxy kind of need it because uh, Jovalich. I mean, I, I don't know what the deal is, um, but we, we, you know, Vanny's got to get him scoring regularly as a starter or something because. Uh, the key to the Galaxy making the playoffs this year, I mean, the defense is what it is, but they're going to need more production. And Alex, um, you know, let, let, let me uh, let me hit you up on this because the Galaxy, you said, are last in the, in the East. Or excuse me, they're last in the Western Conference. Uh, they're more than a few points out from the playoffs. But, you know, I think there's some hope here because – uh, I said at the beginning, and I've said consistently throughout, this is going to be a weird season. Uh, the 2023 MLS season, it's 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 very uh, unorthodox. You've got this League's Cup coming up for the first time. It hasn't even happened yet, and everyone's already complaining about the travel and how everyone's exhausted, and they're you know basically exhausting their lineups. And you've got, you know, now you've got the biggest thing, which is Messi coming to MLS. 
and you've got a situation where two thirds, three quarters of the teams make the playoffs. And this is kind of a weird year. So Alex, let, let me hit you up with this. Uh, if the galaxy somehow make the playoffs, maybe go on a run. Is that, is that the best we can hope for? Or is it, you know, or do we have to be sticklers and talk about, well, they didn't make, you know, they didn't advance from last year. So the whole season's a failure. I mean, wh wh how, how do you, how do you put everything into perspective? Yeah. I mean, we're at the halfway point of the year, and obviously with the Galaxy are at, I don't think a lot of us expected them to be here. We all expected them to kind of keep up that form from 2022. Um, but right now, I mean, the best you can do is just kind of hope and, and, and fight for things and just be able to put things up. I mean, we've talked to players. They still believe that they can put it all together. Strongly. Uh, yes. Uh, and I think the one thing, positive thing for the last couple of weeks you've seen is just they're starting to score a bit more goals. Uh, we saw, you know, for a lot of the year, it was a real struggle to, you know, get goals again. I mean, it's not great. I mean, their leading goal scorer in MLS is Dayan Jovalich and Tyler Boyd. They each ha and Preston Judd, they each have two goals. Like they don't really have anybody else who's kind of, you know, banging in the thing. So right now you're kind of banking on a lot of ifs more than can we, you know, like guarantee things. You know what I mean? Like if, you know, Jovalich, Judd, can they be lethal goal scorers consistently? You know, if Douglas Costa can keep up this form, right? A lot of ifs, and that's kind of the big thing. Um, because I'd say in MLS at this point, uh, anything's possible. They could still go on an incredible run. I mean, they they still have their best player healthy. I mean, sure, Chicharito is out for the year, but let's be honest, he wasn't nowhere near the level of best player on, on the starting 11. So I don't, while I, you know, personally, I don't like seeing him injured and, you know, it's, you know, him fighting back and being able to kind of redeem himself after a poor first year with LA. Obviously, that's a great story. Um, and it's, you know, sucks that it could potentially, this injury could potentially end his Galaxy career. But if we're looking at the numbers and we're looking at the performances, um, you know, I don't want to sound mean and say this, but they won't really miss him too much, if we're being honest, just looking at his production. So I think Joe Village and Judd, and again, if Judd can keep producing. And again, I don't really want to get caught up in this recency bias because, you know, everybody, we all know he's a fan's favorite, right? Like everybody's going to hype him up. Um, but at the same time, there's really not that big of a sample size of, if it's sustainable, do you want to see if it's sustainable by starting him? And, you know, we know Jovalich is a super sub, uh, things like that. So, like I said, it's just a lot of ifs. And, you know, if they make the playoffs, then they're going to have to make some major changes if they want to. So, if, 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 word of the day. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard not to feel for Vanny. Um, he's got so many responsibilities, so many buttons he has to push right. Uh, you know, it's, we, we're always... It's a, we, 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 I think we've been fair to him, but now we're starting to be more critical. Uh, every time he tries something new, that's an opportunity for, you know, he starts Preston Judd. Team has an, uh, uh, how do I put it? Uh, it was a very uh, questionable first half. But I mean, th those are the, those are the choices he has to make. And uh, he doesn't have very many choices. It, it's, it's, it's such an awkward year. Uh, the Galaxy are the second team ever in MLS to have any sort of uh, sanctions for uh, cheating, which is just, you know, we don't even bring that up some, some of the times, but this has been such a weird year. And, uh, yeah, for the Galaxy, I mean, they have so much potential. Uh, I think maybe we can point to the fact that Greg Vanny's possession-based system requires more precision than perhaps other teams. RSL plays super direct, so you know if you play if you if you if you attack an opponent like 20, 30 times and you do it with some sort of uh, precision and some sort of like efficiency, you're going to get X amount of chances and X amount of goals. The Galaxy need everything to be perfect. This is a situation where maybe at the beginning of the year, and you saw it last year when they had you know everybody together, they they struggled the first half of the season, but then they started to click. Uh, some people might say that's because of the summer transfers, but I think it's also because of the fact that their possession-based system requires just a bit more time for everything to just sort of work. And there are so many pieces. I mean, Jalen Neal, uh, you know, Mavinga, uh, he's very good, but what I love about Jalen Neal is that he knows, as Alex put it, he knows when to engage. He knows when to possess the ball, and he's good enough that when – other opposing attacks try and press and they try and you know cause uh, some sort of disruption he's good enough with the ball that he can actually break lines and become an offensive asset that was missing in the first half against sporting kansas city and uh 
you know, at what point do do I become trendable a little bit and I start whining about the fact that, you know, the Galaxy, forget the, 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 the summer transfer or whatever, they're hamstrung by the fact that MLS teams only have so much to spend on rosters and the roster depth is so hard to establish in this league. And it just sucks because it feels like, the, you know, the Galaxy never have a full lineup and a full team. It's always just a bunch, like you said, a bunch of ifs. And speaking of ifs, uh, it's, uh, oh, man, it's getting pretty late. I think we're going to have to shut it down for today, Alex. I know you have plenty of important things to do. I will say uh, before we do leave, that assist by Ricky Pooj is really good. I love oh. Travella assists like that. Like, I have, like, a, I, 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 this sounds weird. I have, like, a fetish for Travella passes. Like, <laughs> like, dude, those things just, like, turn me on. Like, I love watching, like, when those, those things are executed perfectly. And the weight on those passes at times and, and judge just adjust his body perfectly, his head just to get on the end of it. It's not a great header, but the pass is just so beautiful. And I just have to say, like, wow, that thing just blew me away. I enjoyed watching that. So I just wanted to make sure that got it as some some runtime on the podcast. Dude, he put so much spin on the ball that he did all the work for Judd. All he had to do was redirect it. And I, I know what you mean. Like, I, you know what? I was arguing with, with myself in my own head. Like, was Judd's finish good or not? Because it's hard to get it where you hit it over the the keeper and into the net, but at the same time he kind of hit it right at him. So I'm like, was it? Yeah, good? it's like it's like was a it central bad? header. Yeah, it's it's not the best place header, but the assist is what makes it so beautiful. I think yeah. the assist is kind of what covers it up for it a little bit. The you know, it's kind of like makeup Ricky in a way. Pooch. And then you know when he, he was celebrating, like you know, like 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 he just scored like the greatest. Yeah, goal Ricky celebrated game. very hard on 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 that goal. I think that that assist <laughs> is why. He just grabbed some trainer and was like hugging him. Like four or five yeah, I, trust me. If I was Ricky, I'd be doing that too. If I executed that, that is a dude, beautiful pass. I love those passes, man. I love Ricky, man. That dude's so competitive. So like, y you feel for him. There, uh, there was a period after uh, the equalizer, something happened, and like, you know how he does that little hop when he's mad. He did like three hops, like as if to emphasize, oh, "I'm really mad." And it's just like, poor guy. I want to see him succeed. I want to see this team succeed. That's why we try and be as optimistic as possible. Sure. I think and the before... worst thing from the night, if, if we're gonna end it on here, uh, you know, Martin Casas is leaving uh, the the game. I think 85th minute uh, gets into a tackle. Uh, bumps knees, I think, with Johnny Russell trying to kind of interfere with the shot. Bond makes a good save there, but uh, I think the bad thing and the really worrying thing now is uh, Casares potentially being out for a while. Again, we'll find out uh, tomorrow by Greg Vanny. Um, but with Jalen Neal and Eric Zavaleta out, both could be potentially out for you know a month. I mean, we know the U.S. are one of the favorites, and I think El Salvador are a pretty decent team. Um, so they could be out for a long time. And again, Chris Mavinga just barely coming back. Sega Kulabali is going to take a couple of weeks or two in order to get back. Uh, you know, Calvin Lairdam had to come in. And, you know, he's not a, a center back uh, by nature, but we'll see who steps up. I mean, if there's a time for another young center back to come up and Marcus Fercranis, um, his time's right here, you know, the natural center back. I don't know if Greg would want to do that on the road against Colorado this second weekend, <laughs> but I mean, that's an option. But again, we'll see his status, if it is severe, if he's gone for long. Um, again, we don't know. When we talked to Vanny uh, last night, he didn't really you know, know yeah. exactly how long he'd be out for uh, or if he'd even be out for a game at all. He really didn't know. Um, Vanny so... was BSing on the center back availability because <laughs> we asked about Kalibali and he, said, he did the thing where it's like, well, I got he's got a couple of things and then we'll see what happens after the things. I'm like, all right, that's three weeks. And then uh, it was the other dude, Casares. He was a, he was admittedly he was joking. He was talking about, oh, maybe it'll be 24 hour contusion or something and he'll be ready to go by uh, Colorado for the weekend, which was that was his idea of a joke. Uh, hopefully, he's okay, but at the very least, this dude's gonna be out a couple of days. So, uh, pray for the pray for the best. Expect the worst. We'll see what happens with Casaras. Um, I thought it was very classy of the fans to give him a hearty round of applause as he made his way out the stadium. What a player! So to be honest, what a player! He's played so many games this year at 35 years old. Still puts so much effort, uh, despite you know constantly being under pressure, and you know I mean, the defense nice. again hasn't been amazing. But he's he's put his heart out. You can't uh, say otherwise. You have certain players who are just warriors and, and know, like 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 for example, we're talking about his uh, his aerial prowess. Some players are just warriors and know just not only how to get in the box and how to get on those balls, but you know 
sometimes you go on the end of those knowing you're going to get like smashed in the face by some keeper's elbow or like a knee or a face or an arm or just, you know, anything. And he, you know, he's a warrior. So let's, uh, let's pray for a quick recovery from him. And then, uh, you know, the, the galaxy will be playing Colorado on Saturday, six thirty Pacific time. I don't know if you about- saw, but they had abandoned their game because of weather storms and thunderstorms. So, so I'm going to keep in mind if that's a possibility on uh, Saturday, which would suck for the Galaxy because you didn't want to you know, cram your calendar even more. But again, uh, we don't know if that's going to happen, but just saying it could be a possibility. Yeah, and apparently rain delay is a little worse because you're just kind of stuck in there. You can't really stretch. You're just in some weird area, and you just kind of have to wait. It sucks. But yeah, um, it, however, they do have San Jose coming up. They have LAFC coming up. They have Philadelphia coming up. So uh, this Colorado game could be a chance for the Galaxy to pick up some points. So we'll see. Um, but in any I guess uh, we got to go, Alex. We, we went 40 minutes. That's pretty good. My name is Mike Gray. I cover the Galaxy and LAC for the striker. To my right is your, your right is Alex Reese covers the Galaxy for the striker. He's our beat writer. His keys to the game are always on point. If you don't read them, you're just missing out. So what are you doing? Subscribe immediately. Get off YouTube. Subscribe now. And then go listen to Corner of the Podcast. Or Galaxy. <laughs> All right.